Hey everybody, is the destabilization campaign sweeping North Africa in the Middle East in the coming attack on Syria a sign of US dollar weakness and the fact that the dollar may be on the verge of a collapse? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Fabian for Liberty, reporting for Alternative Media Television. So a lot of people haven't talked about how the destabilization campaign sweeping the Middle East and North Africa may be linked to the U.S. dollar. That's what I believe. If we look at fiat currency, an average lifespan for fiat currency is about 37 years. We're now in the 40th year, like, oh, let's have a birthday party, for the U.S. dollar since it was depegged from the, uh, from the gold standard. Well, we got away from the gold standard, and then really in the 70s, it became more of the petrodollar. Um, and so really our dollar is backed by oil. If you look at it, anybody who wants to buy oil from the most part, from many of these OPEC nations, need to use U.S. dollars. Now, China and Russia have been challenging that uh, by entering into bilateral trade agreements, and China has been entering into bilateral trade agreements with a bunch of other countries, Japan, some of the top eight economies in Asia as well. And so the way it used to go down was that if you wanted to buy 500 Volkswagens and you lived in Brazil, you would need to convert your uh, Brazilian currency, I believe the real, into U.S. dollars to then go buy those, um, those, uh, those cars. Well, it led to a lot of demand for U.S. dollars. Well, we know with the spiraling derivative bubble implosion that's already taking place and leading the Fed to increase their balance sheet from 700, 800 trillion billion to over four, to close to four, four trillion dollars. We know that there's a lot of demand on the Fed to print new money to pay for all this stuff. Not to mention, there's not that much demand for U.S. dollars anymore. If you consider all of the bilateral trade agreements now taking place that now have opted out of the dollar. And those are just, that's a trend that will continue. That's not all of a sudden, you know, one day the Chinese premier is not going to wake up and Vladimir Putin is going to wake up and be like, hey, remember that uh, bilateral trade agreement we did? You know, let's not do that anymore. Let's have U.S. dollars and let's lose about three or four percentage points of the transaction as almost a brokerage free to a bankrupted West or a bankrupted Washington, D.C. I don't think so. So then you must have, if you have a petrodollar, what do you need to back it? Well, you need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of oil, natural gas, mostly oil. That's why this destabilization campaign has been taking place. Egypt may not have a lot of oil, but they are on the, they're on a very pivotal point uh, Suez Canal, and then you have Iran with the Strait of Hormuz, a very critical area where massive oil shipments are shipped. Also, Syria has the only, although they have oil and natural gas, they have the only port on the Mediterranean. Uh, think about it, the U.S. basically controls the rest of them with either military bases or whatever it may be. This is all about keeping that petrodollar system intact. It's why you see these fairy tale, fraudulent, phony stories of weapons mass destructions used over and over again because most people, they don't remember what they did last week, let alone that the same narrative was used uh, just 10 years ago in Iraq. You and I may, you know, see all this and be like, this is shocking, this is insanity, and that is what it is. Um, but I firmly believe this is all economic economics, the military-industrial complex uh, that is bankrolled by the banking cartels that have hijacked the republic. This is big business. And I got a great comment the other day that I totally agree with. There is no real money being made in destroying the world in the World War III nuclear war. It's much better to have a bunch of these wars going on for a very long time. That's how they make the most money. And that's, I think that's what we're seeing right now. I don't think China stands up to defend Syria. I think their longer-term plan is to watch the West bankrupt themselves, which isn't it funny to see France, England, the U.S. continue with the military campaigns when they're totally broke. It's like, you know, the couple that is totally broke, massive credit card debt, but then they go down in their basement and they're going to start to... Uh, print money or, or, or create phony money to continue to go out and buy more stuff at the mall. That's basically what America has become. That's what France and Europe and England has become. It's embarrassing. And as an American, let me just say one last point to those of you watching around the world. The majority of Americans don't condone these strikes. We don't uh, approve of them. And they're not being done in our name. They're being done in the name of a totally brazen criminal government that has hijacked the republic.